What do you do when someone who you've been dating for a while is still not sure about you? Like it's been long enough where they've had plenty of time they really should know by now. You've been spending a ton of time together. Maybe you've met their friends, their family. You've spent almost every weekend together. You've gone away maybe on vacation, but they still say that they need more time before making a commitment to you. And we're not even talking marriage here. We're just talking about getting into a relationship, being boyfriend, girlfriend. Do you stay and wait? Do you go? That's what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. But before I do that real quick, I wanna introduce myself in case you're new here. Welcome, my name is Lindsay. I am the Real Love Alchemist and I help you go from bad relationships to real love with the magic of subconscious work. So long story short, that means I am a coach and an energy healer and I use energy healing to release subconscious blocks that might be holding you back from real love. So these could be things like emotional energies, soul ties, negative beliefs. If you've got something going on in the subconscious, we can work with it. So if this interests you, click on the link in the description and tap the link for work with me. Okay, so what do you do when they're not sure about you? So here's the thing, it's natural in the beginning of dating to not be sure about somebody. Like that is the point of dating in those first initial days and weeks of getting to know each other, you're not sure. The point of dating is to explore and see if there is enough connection and compatibility to give it a go, to see if this can be a long-term partnership or a marriage. But what if it's been months of seeing this person and they're saying they're still not sure, they need more time? Maybe they've even told you about their past, maybe they've been hurt in the past, and they're hesitant to commit again. And you get that, you understand that because you've been hurt in the past too. And so the first answer that might come to you is, well, I should give them time, I should wait. And so maybe you start to try extra hard to please them, to turn yourself into the kind of person that you think that they want, or maybe they've told you that they want. You put their needs first while kind of putting your own needs and your own pain on the back burner. Because you wanna be a good person, right? You, you understand when someone is in pain, you have empathy and you wanna respect their boundaries. So if this is you, like totally, totally understandable to be in this place. You want to do the right thing and respect their wishes, right? But there's something that happens when you do this, when you're turning yourself inside out, when you're putting their needs first and putting yours on the back burner. You might be feeling things like taken for granted, unworthy, not enough in some way. You might even feel like I don't deserve to be chosen or I'm not good enough. You might even be feeling sad all the time or even feelings of grief, like you've lost something. The longer you wait for this person to choose you, the worse you end up feeling about yourself. And that's what we need to talk about here because this gets deep real quick. Feeling bad all the time is not the place you want to be if you're looking for real healthy love. Real love does not mean feeling bad all the time. Now, are there gonna be times where there's some hurt feelings or there's some sadness or there's a challenge that you're working through in, in real love in a healthy relationship? Yes, yes there will be. But feeling bad all the time or most of the time that's not real love. Having a healthy relationship means balancing both people's needs. And this even counts while you're not in a relationship, while you're still dating. This is still just as important in the dating stage. Because if respecting this other person's request for time and space makes your self-worth plummet, then this relationship, even if it got to that point, was not going to work out. That's not a healthy compromise to make. So here's the thing, if one person has to be suffering intensely while the other person is just fine or okay in the relationship, that's again, that's not a healthy compromise to make. And it's actually a basic incompatibility. And so like I said, the relationship wasn't going to work out anyway if it did get to that point. Like if their comfort zone is needing some space, needing some time, not committing, but you are suffering intensely. You're in a lot of pain. You're feeling not good enough. You're feeling unworthy. It's affecting your sleep. It's getting hard to work. 
that's not good. That's not real love. And it goes the same in reverse. If what you would need to feel comfortable and okay is kind of like forcing them to commit before they're ready, you might be fine. You might be feeling great, but they might be feeling super anxious, super stressed. They're not sleeping. It's affecting their self-worth. It's affecting their work. Then that's not a healthy compromise either. And so the reality is sometimes we have to let go of someone in order to save ourselves, to take good care of ourselves. Because in situations like this, it's really hard to compromise. I mean, you could give someone, let's say a few more weeks, if you really wanted to wait that long, but you would have to have a limit for yourself. Like you'd have to hold fast to that couple additional weeks. Otherwise you're just waiting endlessly. And again, your self-worth could be affected. You could be, it could be affecting all areas of your life to stay in this dynamic when you're suffering. And here's the thing here too. We have to be honest with ourselves about our own suffering. Cause sometimes we're not, sometimes we're like, Oh no, we're fine. We're fine to wait. But really actually, deep down, we're having a really hard time. And so we have to be open to feeling our feelings in these kinds of situations. And really, again, being honest with ourselves and saying like, am I really okay with this? Is this truly how I want to feel in a relationship? Does this really work for me? Because the truth is you deserve to be with someone who, after getting to know you for a while, sees how amazing you are and who's ready to dive in. Again, not, not ready to get married, not ready for, for all that right away, but who is ready to jump in with you, commit and see what this is. See if this can be a long-term relationship or a marriage. They don't have to be ready for the, the long-term commitment, but a few weeks is more than enough to be ready to be boyfriend, girlfriend, to know enough about you. And this is given that you're spending a, a good amount of time together, that's plenty of time to get to know someone. So here's the thing. Sometimes what keeps us in these situations where we're endlessly waiting for someone, which can basically be a situationship, why we get into those places are often due to subconscious blocks. And that's why I specialize in clearing those subconscious blocks because I, I know this place intimately. I have been here too. We can have beliefs that we're not enough or that we're always alone or that nothing ever works out for us. There can be resistances to things like relationships. You can literally have a resistance to a relationship and there can be pain from our past. And these could be things like trapped emotions, suppressed emotional energies, like grief, abandonment that can keep us thinking deep down that this is all there is for us. And again, I, I have been here. I can remember a specific situation where, gosh, I waited a long time, like, like months. And if you would ask me at the time, like, <laughs> was I okay with this? I would have said, yeah, like, I don't love it, but like, I'm fine to wait. I really like this person. It's cool. But that was not really what was going on. Deep down, I had all these subconscious blocks. I didn't believe I was worthy of being chosen. I didn't believe that there was something better out there for me. I had all kinds of resistances to intimacy and, and real connection. And so that's the kind of situation that I stayed in. And so eventually I did leave those situations and I released these blocks. I did the, the inner work, the healing work. And now I'm in a situation where I am fully chosen. And I did not believe that that was possible for me. I could not see that reality until I did that inner work, until I released those resistances, those blocks to love. So if you can relate to this, if you recognize yourself in this and you want to release those subconscious blocks that are keeping you in these situations and away from real love, then click on the link in the description where it says work with me and you can schedule a free consultation. Speaking of feeling bad in relationships, if you always end up in relationships where you feel abandoned, then this video is for you. Check it out.